Sunday morning on CBS. And here again is Jane Pauley. Heat Wave was a hot hit for music legend Linda Ronstadt back in the day. And although illness has cruelly diminished her talent in recent years, Tracy Smith tells us the loyalty of her fans is as strong as ever. Look closely and you'll spot a name you don't see much on theater marquees anymore. Good evening. I will waste no time at all. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Linda Ronstadt. Linda Ronstadt quit performing years ago. Her Parkinson's disease makes singing impossible. But last fall, with the help of her longtime friend, John Boylan, she spoke to a sellout crowd in Los Angeles who came to see her in person and listened to her talk about what's been a magical life. Well, the great thing about having a hit is that it means people like you, but the bad thing about it is that it means you have to sing that song over and over and over again, night after night after night, until it starts sounding like your washing machine. What's it like to get that kind of warmth when you're just talking? I was just astounded. I mean, it, was, it made me feel good, but I was glad they didn't boo or start yelling for heat wave. <laughs> and you know, she's heard that before. In case you need a reminder, Linda Ronstadt was a musical force of nature who sold 100 million records, had four consecutive platinum albums, and won an armful of Grammys for songs in wildly different music styles, like country, Latin, and pop. Hear me for much of her career, she practically lived on the road, but these days, her world's a bit smaller. She mostly keeps to a San Francisco neighborhood close to the famous bridge and a house on a quiet street where it seems she's now become the world's most famous couch potato. What do you spend your time doing these days? Um, well, I, I do a lot of reading. I can't do a lot of things that are active. I can't spend very much time on my feet or even very much time sitting up. I have to kind of lounge around. But I, I'm, I'm lazy, so it's a good thing that I lounge. So I'm glad to have the leisure time. I have a huge stack of books that I need to read. When you think about those songs, in your mind, can you still sing, if that makes oh, sense? I can sing in my brain. I sing in my brain all the time. But it's not the, quite the same as doing it physically. You know, there's a physical feeling in singing that's just like skiing down a hill. Except better, because I'm not a very good skier. <laughs> but she was a very good singer. For more than four decades, it seemed there was nothing Linda Ronstadt couldn't do, until she sensed that her voice was beginning to fail her. When did you start noticing there was something wrong with your voice? 2000. Was it faltering? Yeah, it would start to, I'd start to sing and then it would just clamp up. It was like a cramp. It was like a it would freeze. My voice would freeze. And I said, there's something wrong with my voice. And people say, oh, you're just a perfectionist. I go, no, there's really something systemically wrong. And it's very slow moving, this disease, so. It took a long time to really finally manifest. I'm going back someday. She played her last show in 2009, but it wasn't until 2013 that she revealed she'd been diagnosed with Parkinson's. And you retired before you even knew what was happening. Oh yeah, I was just yelling. Instead of singing, I was just kind of yelling. That's how you heard it? Yeah, I didn't want to charge people for that. Do you think other people heard it too? or? Really? Yeah. Yeah. I can't, but I mean, it wouldn't have mattered. I could hear it. And it wasn't any fun anymore, you know? Singing is you know, really a lot of things you can do with your voice. You can slide onto all different sorts of textures and, you know, and if you're not doing that, it's not interesting. So, ladies and gentlemen, here they are. Emmy Lou Harris, Linda Ronstadt, and Dolly Parton. Kids. And she always tried to keep it interesting. Besides her solo work, she teamed up with some of the greatest voices in the business. Well, I dreamed I saw the knights in armor come, saying something about a queen. No record company wanted to touch that. They called us the Queenston Trio. Queenston Trio? <laughs> Queenston Trio. The archers split the tree. There was a man. It's an amazing thing when you sing with somebody. It's a very intimate relationship. It's, 
it's almost like sex. It's as intimate as sex, but it's not sex. It's different. And it's yeah. that intimate. It's that intimate. It's like a great love affair. Her own love affair with music started when she was a kid growing up in Arizona in a musical family, learning to sing and play the guitar. She was and is an independent spirit, from her career choices to her relationships, like her much publicized romance with former California governor, Jerry Brown. Do you talk to Jerry Brown, by the way? Yeah, he was here for Thanksgiving. He was? Yeah. Oh, that's great. It seems like you've managed to maintain relationships with people who were in your life. I don't know why they're still speaking to me, but they are. <laughs> why didn't you ever get married? I was not cut out for marriage. I, I used to dream that I was going to get married, and I was too, I go, I'm too young to get married. And this was when I was like 45, you know. And I go, I can't get married, I'm too young. So I guess that means I'm just really immature. <laughs> I'm not good at compromising. <laughs> You know this about yourself, right? Oh boy, do I ever. People say I'm the life of the party. But her refusal to compromise helped her reach the heights of artistic achievement and take home countless awards, including the National Medal of Arts, presented by an admittedly smitten president. The 2013 National Medal of Arts to Linda Ronstadt for her one of a kind voice and her decades of remarkable music. President Obama confessed or admitted to having a crush on you? Oh, he was being nice to a 70-year-old 70, 70 woman in a wheelchair. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> How about that medal? Do accolades like that mean something well, to you? Well, it's kind of big. I didn't know what to do with it. I put it under the bed. Then you put it under the bed? It's under my bed. <laughs> <laughs> with my crowbar that I have for in case there's an earthquake and I have to pry the roof off myself. I have a crowbar and metal under the bed. I mean, it's nice to be acknowledged. It's nice for your work to be acknowledged, but it's not what you do it for. You do it for the work. You know, and if you're doing it for prizes, you're in big trouble. Saving nickels, saving dollars. And who knows, there could be even more awards on the way. Last week, she came out with a new live album, her first ever, made from these newly uncovered tapes of a made-for-TV concert in 1980, when she was at the height of her vocal powers. I'm going back someday, come what may do, blue fly. But now I can't even really, I can't even sing in the shower. Do you try? Yeah, but then it doesn't, I can't make sound, you can't, I can't. My vocal cords won't make the repetition. It won't even come out. Mm -mm. They've talked over the years about various treatments that could make singing come back. Um, I'm sure they'll find something eventually, you know. They're learning so much more about it every day. I mean, I'm 72, we're all gonna die. So they say people usually die with Parkinson's. They don't always die of it because it's so slow moving. So I figure I'll die of something and, and I've watched people die, so I'm not as afraid of dying. I'm afraid of suffering, but I'm not afraid of dying. And ever the performer, she says she'd like to go out singing. I thought that's the way I'd like to die, is right in the middle of a note, you know. But the hit record got us a tour with the opening for The Doors for four months. <laughs> it's pretty tough to play with The Doors. It's kind of like a double bill of Bambi and Deep Throat. <laughs> As of right now, there are no more conversations with Linda Ronstadt on the books. But at 72, she's learned never to say never. Ladies and gentlemen, Linda Ronstadt. <laughs> and at the end of the night, as she started to leave the stage, she hesitated for just a moment. Maybe that's because, like her millions of fans, Linda Ronstadt is not quite ready to say goodbye.